Hey guys, today I just want to make a video on how to culture your own Daphnia. Now I started off with this little five gallon tank I got from PetSmart for 20 bucks on sale. Normally I use this to breed uh, small endlers, you know, male and two females, but I had an extra and I figured since this is the first time I started to culture this, I definitely wanted to learn everything I could about these with a clearly visible atmosphere to look through the glass and see what they do, where they like. So a good way of knowing, you know, when you need to feed them is when they're dispersed like this. And you can see very clearly through the glass. So I started off with this culture here and I actually had them in another tank and I killed one of them because I overfed it. And I learned real quickly, you don't want to overfeed them. I feed them baker's yeast and just a mixture of some fish flake with spirulina or chlorella in it. And uh, I've been testing with other things too, like corn cake mix and stuff like that. So the jury is not out on what you can feed these things. They definitely eat the micro bacteria in the water suspended. So I'll show you how to do that. But I started off with this one and I figured out, you know, A, you don't need air. A lot of people said you want to put an air hose in here. Don't put a, a bubbler on it and all this stuff. And I, I did the air hose, but actually um, sometimes these Daphne will get stuck in an air bubble even without air. So when you added one in there, it definitely had a few casualties a day, even without the bubbler at a slow rate. So, and I found out that they definitely don't like the water flow. They have less control and I think they breed slower with it. Now, maybe in a larger pool, maybe that, that has a ton of allergy in it or hair allergy or something, maybe that would make more sense. But in the five, 10 gallon things that I'm doing, it absolutely made sense to take that out. So I took it out and you can see they're doing pretty well in here. So start off with that. And then I moved on and tried to find cheaper ways of doing it. So I start off with this little thing. It's a drawer out of one of those cheap little plastic things you buy at Target or whatever. I had an extra one somehow. I guess the major thing broke. But anyways, anything will work. As long as you can see in there and keep an eye on how they're doing, you know, there's a lot in there. So after I did this and I, you know, no heater, no air bubbler, everything's fine. The most important thing they do like is light. That's pretty much all you need to give them is light. And they, uh, so I start off with that very successfully went on and then I moved on to these other containers, which I got at, you know, office max or something for five bucks a piece. And you can see they're really thriving in there. So don't think that you need a real fish tank or something to put them in there. You know, this works just fine. Now the water I use comes from my fish tanks and my fish tanks are RO water remineralized in a cage raised by baking powder or baking soda, pure baking soda. So the end product is this dirty water. You can see there's lots of mold in there and stuff and uh, they love it. So I do this and what I'll do is basically I'll just net out what I want for the, uh, out of which one's doing most successfully or has the most in it. So I'm never really wasting their population like all at once. So there's always pretty much a steady volume of it. This is a great way to culture live food for your fish. I breed a bunch of guppies and endlers and stuff. So um, it works really well. It's a cheap way to, to do your live food. I still feed my fish, you know, uh, fish flakes, chlorella fish flakes and stuff like that. And just whatever I can get my hands on for a good deal on Amazon or something. I supplement that mostly. And my cat is in the way. Moses girl. Who gives you babies? And, uh, but this is what I do and this is what I recommend. So after that, I even continued on. I went to the dollar store and they have these little containers here. And I just started putting these in here, but you can see they do just fine in there. And like I said, the most important thing I think out of all this is A, you don't overfeed them. And I'll show you that in a second. You wanna feed, I feed mine once a day. That means I don't feed them enough to last for two days. I think that's what kills them. Um, you know, they, they reproduce really quickly and they eat really fast. So just, just put it in there and then don't put anything, don't put it, add any more food until the water's crystal clear. So you can see that this is not a crystal clear container, but you can still see there's still room for them to eat food and clearly they're eating something. 
they always tend to go to one corner. And I've noticed that the youngers, like the, the, the smaller ones will go to different corners. They almost like get segregated by like generation Z and the boomers are over here. So when I feed, it depends on which tank I'm going into. If I want to feed them, you know, the little millennials, I'll feed them these guys. Or if I want to go for the big boomers for a bigger tank, I'll go in here. But I try not to fuck with this one too much because this is the one in theory that's going to produce the next baby. So I don't, I, if, I, I try to get the younger ones if I can. Cause that, you know, that you want, you want the big ones to keep producing. They're the ones that'll spit out more babies. And I've, I think I've seen them do it. They literally drop a live baby out of, out of them. Um, it's pretty cool looking. You can see the baby. If you look real close in there or you find if, when you have your Daphne, you'll, you'll be able to see that they have the baby inside of them. And I think I've seen them just drop it right out of them. Like a live baby just comes right out. Pretty cool. They're a crustacean. And uh, they're really good. The fish love them. They're great for many reasons. Not only is it just a consistent natural food source of live food, but if you have very finicky fish or fish that are having a hard time eating, or even if you have new fish in a tank and they don't know if they don't know you or their environment, they're hiding. This is a great way to pull them out. So I highly recommend doing it the cheapest way you can, and have multiple tanks. So like with this, that tank up there. And that one on the side of it, I have seven. So each day, I'll basically pull out of which one seems to be the most abundant at that time. So that way you're never really decimating a population. You're always having full strength somewhere or multiple places. These ones being the weakest right now because I just started them. But this one over here, you can see is, you know, I put those, I put maybe 200 in here a week ago and they've blown up. So great food source, easy to do. Now I'm going to show you how to right here and you can buy, you know, this stuff, the red star for like a pound for $6 on Amazon. I recommend that it works just fine. You know, these are just food after all. So what I'll do, so I'll just take a small little pinch, literally a pinch and I'll put it in there. I'll fill it up with RO water. So once you have it filled up, mixed up, you'll shake it up. You want it to be nice and cloudy, not insanely cloudy, because the point is you don't want to feed them too much. Now, they don't really need to eat too much, but I'll just pour it in here so you can kind of see. I'll just put about, you know, that much, just so much so that you can see the water's cloudy but it's not completely milky see-through. I think a lot of people online are saying, oh, you know, put enough in there the last three days. I, I did that and it killed them all. So unless you have a really hot, healthy population, you have to feed them that much and the water's becoming crystal clear in a matter of hours. I think it's best to feed them, underfeed them until you really get a hang of how much they can consume or at least until you have a large population where that's just not enough. And you, You'll have to figure that out on your own. There's no YouTube video that will teach you that. So the main thing is don't overfeed them. Make sure you have a nice light on it. You know, you can even put a really bright light on them. Like over here, I have like a, I think it's like a 10,000 lumen LED light and a red light. And that's another thing I want to talk about is if I've been noticing so on these, I have all transparent containers, so I stack them on top of each other, so light will go through, and theoretically, I could even put more and more on top, or even create it wider. Um, but I've noticed, and you can see in here, that they prefer the red light. Now, I know that they're red in color naturally, like see right here, this is the 6, 6500K, so it's slightly a little bluer white light. I think it's called cool white light. And uh, these are not, you know, plant LEDs or anything like that. They are LED bulbs. And uh, you can see the younger ones are over here. But the general population it seems to prefer the red light. And I leave the red light on 24 hours. That's like their night light. But I turn the cool white off at night. So I do think that they prefer the red light. I'm not sure why that would be. Maybe it has something to do with their shell or their photosynthesis or what, whatever it is, but they prefer the red light. Maybe it's too intense for this one, but regardless, 
You know, if you've ever had fish tanks, you know, you every once in a while you'll get green water if your light is too strong. And they love green water. So um, hopefully there's constantly some allergy bloom that they're just eating up in these things and it's being produced by the light. Now they love light. They're just like a bunch of little bugs. They like to fly towards it. But if you want to test that out, uh, you know, maybe get a red LED light. I think they like it a lot. So now that I've shown you how to feed them, what to feed them, what they like, the type of light they like, the container they have, and the, the air situation, um, I want to tell you a little bit about the water I give them. So every time I do a water change, I'll take, you know, the mulm and I'll clean, I'll vacuum the bottom here, and that'll be my used water I put them into. Now, they don't necessarily need drastic water changes, and because I feed them using reverse osmosis or RO water, um, it basically con continually tops off their tank with fresh water. So if I notice that the tank water is not looking mulmy or it's looking really super clear, I'll either add remineralizer that I remineralize my RO water with or just top it off with used fish water. Um, either works. A lot of people said RO water kills them. That just wasn't the fact. So I feed them with RO water and it works just fine and, and I really haven't had an issue. But you need to use fish water, and my fish water, after I remineralize it, is about between pH, you know, 7.5 to 8.0, a TDS hardness, you know, GH of medium to hard water. It tests on my TDS meter from anywhere to 400 to 700 TDS, and that's just with pure remineralizer, which is the calcium, the potassium, all that, the sodium, all that, the salts, um, and it's it works just fine. Um, now they absolutely love the old fish water because it also has the, the bacteria in it which is beneficial to our fish. So the older the tank you have, clearly the better fish water it is to use. Um, they'll clean it out, they'll clear it out. That's what they eat is the bacteria in it. So uh, that's just a little bit about the RO water. Uh, more videos to come. Thanks for watching this video. If you have any questions, please comment down below and I will answer it and what I know. Uh, there'll be more videos as far as breeding guppies and endlers and reviews on different products like lights, filters, etc. So thanks for watching. Have a good day.